What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here, and this week we're going to talk about the one thing that is guaranteed to come at least one point during your disc golf career, mistakes. We can't all be the luckiest player in the world, and mistakes are going to happen to us while we're out on the course. The question then becomes, how do we get past those mistakes? I want to be extremely vulnerable with you guys and talk about a recent tournament performance I had. While I was playing this tournament, I made one of the dumbest errors I I have ever made in my disc golf career, much less in a tournament. We're going to talk about the mistake I made that was on film. Unfortunate for me, but I guess fortunate for you. So before we dive into the mistake, we have to talk about how the round was going. This was the second round of a two round tournament and I was only three strokes back from the lead when the round started. Heading into the first hole, it was 210 feet with OB sitting behind the basket. You'll also notice I'm a bit of a dancer when it comes to the round, and that's because I really do try to get out of my own head. But I also stay inside of the 30 seconds allotted for my throw. The throw felt great out of my hands and got about 50 feet worth of ground play, eventually skidding OB. I felt pretty nervous walking into this putt because I didn't want to give up a stroke to the rest of the field and so I danced it out but eventually came back to it visualizing my line and putting the disc in the basket. This felt great because no strokes really lost, only one person ended up grabbing the birdie on that hole anyways. In the next hole I got ready, got into the right mental state and when I saw the line I ripped it. I put myself about 20, 25 feet away from the basket and was able to convert the birdie on this one. I'm starting to feel amazing heading into this second round and I'm starting to feel this confidence build of, hey, I may actually be able to make a run. And then we got to the third hole. Just a nice casual putter toss down the hill and I got my disc to be about 10 feet away from the basket. Thinking to myself, this is a tap-in birdie, this is where disaster struck. If you blinked, you would have missed it, so let's run it back. That's right, a 10 foot or closer putt I just quacked in the middle of a tournament round. I can't describe to you the blow to my confidence I was feeling and when you watch it in slow motion, honestly, I just spaced while I was putting. I was not focused while following through and I just assumed the disc was going to fall into the basket. I had my music playing though and stepped up to the next hole trying to forget that last one, but we had a backup on the hole. In fact, we would continue to have a backup on every single hole for the rest of the round. I was left alone with my thoughts, and this totally showed on the next tee shot. A simple forehand hyzer that I actually birdied in the last round, I step up to and shank this shot. I could start to see the walls crumbling, and so I stepped into the next shot and literally told myself, Robbie, you are the upshot king. Go park this disc. And what did I do? Placed it about three feet away from the basket. I tried to tell myself, Robbie, you're not a terrible player. Just get back in it. You've got this. I step into the next hole, throw my shot exactly how I want it to go, and it doesn't get the skip that I wanted. I started to think to myself, well, that's a bummer. I really thought I was going to be parked, but you know what, Robbie, you're okay. You can still drain this putt. I get ready. I get the right thought process, and yeah, it falls right out of the basket. I really start to feel the round slipping away from me because I have felt two unlucky moments happen in a row. Stepping in the next hole, I try to leave everything behind me. I start jamming and dancing again, and next thing I know, I throw a fantastic tee shot exactly where I wanted it to go. Well, not exactly where I wanted it to go, about 35 to 40 feet away from the basket. Everyone else was casually trying to walk up to their discs and I asked if I'm ready to go, can I go ahead and put this in the basket? And my card said, absolutely dude, go for it. So I saw the putt that I wanted to throw, I step up to the disc and boom. I hit a 35 to 40 foot putt, bang, we're right back in it. I'm telling myself over and over again, Robbie, you can do this. You wanna know where my round died? 
hole 10. I step up to take the safe option and throw a forehand. I had just watched multiple card mates throw the same forehand, get a flare, and skip right to the green. And what happens? I threw the exact shot that I wanted. It lands exactly where I wanted it to flare, and it doesn't flare at all and ends up stalling and stopping OB. And when you look at my posture on the tee box, you could tell I was finally broken. I would step up to the next tee box, extremely frustrated, telling myself how lucky I was, and in anger, I ripped the disc way offline and gave myself a hard upshot. I put too much juice on the upshot and left myself about a 45 foot putt. I didn't commit to the putt because I'm telling myself what a terrible player I am over and over and over again. I believe the lesson that we can learn is that when mistakes happen in our round, we have two choices we can make. We can either look at that mistake as an anomaly and move past it, or we can look at that mistake and allow it to become our identity. I told myself you made that mistake because you're a terrible player, and I truly continued to believe that I was. Even though when I look at the next few holes, I made several shots and putts that proved I am not a terrible player. I was at a crossroads to decide, am I a good player or a bad player? And rather than pay attention to the good shots, I decided, yeah, the bad shots are the only ones that matter. And I believe as beginners, we make that mistake all the time. It's as if we take a pair of glasses that show our flaws and unluckiness and put them on. We see all of the terrible tree hits and unlucky bounces we're getting. We look at the rollaways that are happening and think to ourselves, Man, this is just the worst. I'm having an atrocious round. We see spit outs and wonder, why God, why have you done this to me? I believe these glasses are called the bummer bifocals. You either see things as really bad or eh, not that good. When we go back to the putt I had two holes after my mistake, when we view the putt through the eyes of the bummer bifocals, we see this as an incredibly unlucky spit out on a hole that we really needed one to get our self-confidence back. But when we actually look at the putt in reality, I wouldn't even call it a spit out. I would just call it a bad putt. If you look, I hit high left. I should never expect that putt to stick in the basket, and that's on me for not putting it in the dead center chains. And even if it did spit out of dead center chains, that's fine. I probably put too much on it. If we really want to overcome our mistakes, we have to believe that a mistake during a round or a tournament is an anomaly. It is not a failure. You are not a terrible person. Let the mistake be a learning point and start focusing on all of the good things you can do. I want us to take those bummer bifocals and yeet them into the woods. You are an amazing player. I hope this is helpful and I hope that when you find yourself in your next tournament round or even casual round and you make that mistake, that you choose to view this as a stepping stone to success rather than viewing it as a failure. Thank you so much for stopping by, and if this tip was helpful, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button to see when future content comes out on the channel. I love helping people improve their game, and one of the greatest ways I do this is through the Birdie Fam. We talk about mental game, physical limitations, and how to overcome the specific hitches that are keeping you from the greatest possible scores in your personal game. If you want details on how to join the Birdie Fam, head down to the description below and check it out. If you're one of those people that really seems to be the practice round prince like Big Germ and then struggles to convert in tournaments, not trying to say that germ doesn't convert in tournaments. Let me know in the comments below. I want to do a whole series on translating success from the practice round to the tournament round. Would that be something you guys would be interested? Once again, let me know in the comments below. I hope you have an amazing week and get ready to yeet those bummer bifocals away. But for now, I'll leave you with the birdie.